Good afternoon and thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to do a video and I'm going to try to keep it quick, but what we're going to do today is um, create a slider for the dog collars. Um, my dog's collar specifically is one inch wide and you're going to want that, that uh, measurement specifically um, because that's where the collar has to slide through. All right, so let's get straight to it. You can do the whole thing in SoArt and then you can digitize the file in SoArt and then do the editing in SoArt Pro and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go right up here to Shapes. And we're going to choose this circle and we're going to make it an elongated oval, but you can really do this any shape that you feel is good. I'm just using this one because I think it would be pretty. Okay, so don't worry too much about the sizing and stuff right at this moment. For now, we're going to put the middle as white and then we have to click out, click out of that. Go back into the fill regions, unless I'm doing this wrong, um, and go in here and change it. Okay, I'm going to make it purple because I'm going to be doing purple and teal on on teal fabric, I guess you could call it. It's like vinyl fabric from from Hobby Lobby. Okay, so it was that simple. Okay, we just created our shape. And then we don't have to do anything else. We can resize it if we want to, but we can do that in Sew It Pro. So let's just utilize as little amount of stuff in Sew Art as we need to. Okay. All right. So now in here, we're going to go up here to Applique Center Line. Okay. And we're going to choose a bean stitch. We're going to choose a height of two and a length of 35. Those are my favorite settings um, for bean stitch on, on bigger stuff. If, if it's thinner material, you want it to be a smaller length. And if it's thicker material, you're okay to bump it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and we have our 35. And on this, in so our, wherever you click is where it's gonna start. But with the bean stitch, it's going to leave a little bit of a gap because it doesn't do that last stitch. It's a separation at that point before it picks up the next stitch. So it's just open. So what we're going to do is because we're going to go in and erase one of the, the final tack down, we're going to erase the sides so that we can make our slide part. We're just going to go ahead and click over here so that that gap happens where we're going to delete anyways. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we've done that. That's all we have to do. We'll go up to File, Save As. And the first thing that'll come up is Save Image File. I'm going to save it as a PNG. One of um, the members in our group, her daughter is a graphic artist and recommended that we use PNGs for everything. And um, after doing a little, little bit of research, not a lot, but a little bit, she's absolutely right. So everything that I've done since switching to PNG instead of JPG has been wonderful. All right, let's click save. On this one, it doesn't really specifically matter because it's just a bean stitch in a circle. So all right, I didn't title it whenever I saved the image, but I'm going to go ahead and title this as Dog Slider. Okay, and the pattern size is going to be too big for my hoop in here, but like I said, I can fix that. You can change your, your file type right in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and click Save. Okay, it was successfully saved. Now. I don't like closing so art until I'm absolutely all done. So I'm going to minimize it and I'm going to open up So What Pro. I updated everything this morning, so it should be all up to date with everything you guys have. I don't think I've updated my So What Pro in months. So <laughs> I, I was having some problems and whenever I updated it, everything kind of panned out better. All right. So we're going to go ahead and go in here and go to File open and it saved it on oops it was supposed to save it in here oh where did it save it okay i wasn't paying attention whenever it was saving it so let's do that again save as we don't need the image file anymore oh it put it in my documents didn't i want that i want it on my desktop 
Okay, let's try that again. Okay, that's so loud. Okay, now let's try open it. And you can go to file open or you can just click this cute little folder, either way. Desktop, it's gonna be down there under dog slider. We'll click open and there it is. So you have your three pieces, you have your die line, and that's gonna show you where to put your fabric. Number two, you're gonna put your fabric. Number three is our final stitch, okay? So number one shows you where to put it. Number two is where, so you put your fabric down and then number two is the tack down, it holds it on. Number three is your final stitch, okay? We're gonna actually have four total stitches because we're gonna add Sissy's name in here, my dog. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna specifically just highlight this one and you have to click number three. If you're clicked out and you go in and try to use the, the eraser tool, it's gonna erase all three of the layers at once. We don't want that. We're gonna click specifically the one that we want and we're gonna go up here to the open cutting toolbar and then right here, even though it already looks like it's highlighted, click it anyways. And then what we're gonna do, up, okay, let me rewind just a tiny minute. Okay, these each of these blocks sep represent a half an inch, okay? My dog's slider opens for an inch, so I need to be able to erase all of this and then some. So I already opened it up an inch, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it to that next part right there. And that gives it enough time for it to open, or enough room for it to open and for the, the collar to slide through, okay? So there's your one inch block right there, the opening, and then I have just a little bit of space in between. Okay, and this is gonna be the final stitch and I'll be able to show you in person in a few minutes, whenever we're all done with this, how it actually works. So zoom in, make sure you get all of that purple. We're gonna do the same thing on this side and remember how we started our bean stitch over here? And there's the gap I was talking about? Doesn't matter, we are just deleting it. And I hope you guys are having really beautiful weather wherever you are. We are in the Willamette Valley in Oregon and it's really gorgeous weather, but it's very allergy-y right now. <laughs> okay, so once you've erased those sides, we're gonna click close. It's gonna ask us if we want to perform the pending erasures, yes. If you mess up, you wanna click no and just start all over. So we'll click yes. And you can see here where there's the tack down or the die line, sorry, tack down. And then here we have the final stitch, which is going to, um, ooh, I don't know if I like how that looks actually. Well, for the sake of the um, concept of this, we're gonna do it just like this. But I think that what I might wanna do in the future is, only erase a little piece here and 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 turn these into separate stitches on the edges so that it looks like it goes all the way around even though it's gonna be doing it at separate times. Not quite sure how to make that happen though. So I have to put some thought into that. Anyways, so the concept here though, <laughs> what we need is an opening in the back, regardless of what we put in the front, we need an opening in the back. So we've got all this done. This is our slider. If you don't want it to have anything on it, like you have a really pretty pattern that you just wanted to show, then um, you're done. But we are gonna go ahead and go into file, merge, and I'm going to open planet applique that I have on this here. I forget what they're called. <laughs> uh, external hard drive, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just click into fonts and I know which one I want because it's totally adorable. It's the Texas Bell, Texan Bell font. And I have a really beautiful puppy dog who, um, her name is Sissy, and she is a bloodhound. She's a red bloodhound, and she's very beautiful. But she's 
really scared still. So I worry about her getting away from me sometimes. And um, her little jingle jingle collar part keeps getting yanked off somehow, like just from her playing too rough. And um, so I want to have something that actually has her name on it on her body if she gets away from us. Okay, so. All right. Oh, sorry. I got blabby. And okay, so we picked number S. And I just want to say thank you for everybody who's been with me this whole time through SOAR. I know I mess up a lot, and I know that I waste a lot of time in videos figuring things out, but I'm not a professional, and I'm just sharing with you the things that I figure out as I figure them out for the most part. And um, I really love making videos, but I don't, I'm, I'm not really putting a lot of effort into making the production value really fantastic and stuff like that. You know, I just, I want to give videos that people can see that they can do it too. That's all. And I'm really grateful for those of you that have stuck with me and those of you that are new that are just really, really, really nice and always so complimentary. I'm really, really grateful. All right. Oh, <laughs> I wrote silly. I'm really not paying attention. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay. You can just delete the ones you mess up. Okay. I'm going to pick my S's again because her name is Sissy, not Silly. <laughs> Although she is very silly sometimes. Okay, and a little bit closer. Okay, and if you have to do it separated like I did, just grab your letters and one by one, click on each of them and hit control as you're clicking. Just hold control down and it'll let you keep them all together. Okay. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. And now I'm going to click on all of them, move it into the middle more. Oops, too far. Okay, and you can also click right here. It centers the pattern in the hoop. I should have done that. That's this little button up here. Sorry, that was kind of fast. Okay, so now I have my sissy on here and let's click out of icons. And in here it shows you each of these as an individual stitch out. And so with that, we're gonna go up here to edit and we're gonna join threads. And it's gonna say join stitches of same color. We wanna join all adjacent threads of same color. And that means the ones that are next to each other. Um, and what we also want to do is we want to take number three and have it be the very last stitch. We want sissy to go first. If we put the back on before we put the sissy on, then it's going to make it where the, the slider won't, the, you won't be able to get through because, because reasons, <laughs> because the sissy part, the back part will sew your backing together. Okay, so let's click out of that. And then we can go edit, order threads. And we just want to switch three and four. We don't want to do anything to bother anything else. Okay. All right. Okay, so we'll have our die line. And that'll be on the stabilizer. And then we'll put our fabric down. And then we'll have the tack down. That'll go all the way around it. And then it'll do the name. And then we're gonna flip it over and we're going to either tape, I'm gonna tape, but you can tape or spray glue very gently um, the backing onto, onto the back of your hoop. And then you're gonna flip it back over, put it on your machine, and then you're gonna run number four. And that's going to give you just the top stitch and the bottom stitch. And that way, whenever you pull it off, you'll be able to slide the thing through. So this is all done, you guys. I'm going to save it onto my desktop. And I'm going to call it Dog Slider Sissy. Click OK or click Save. All right. And then I will, uh, I wanted to say print it out. I will sew it out. And um, that'll be on video. So I will see you guys in just a moment. Thanks. Bye. Hi, you guys. Please don't mind the mess. I know I'm always making excuses for my mess. Like, 
it was the holidays or this or that or this but really I'm just messy anyways I'm going to show you guys how to do the rest of the color slide I just wanted to share with you real quick um, for 25 bucks like a year ago I bought this garden fabric and it's just polypropylene you can find it at um, Joann's it's called Ollie fun uh, but they have them in different colors this is 25 bucks and I think it was like a hundred feet or like 50 feet but I cut it in the strips and use it as stabilizer for dark things as well as for practice so now that we got that out of the way let's hoop our our stabilizer Okay. I shared that in some of my older videos, but the older videos are kind of hard to watch because they're older. <laughs> okay, so first you hoop your fabric or hoop your stabilizer. And somebody made a comment about my hoops being dirty. It's because I used to use a lot of spray glue on everything. So. Sorry, just trying to get where you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, I used to use a lot of spray glue and I just haven't taken the time to clean these. I mean, they're not trying to impress anyone. <laughs> Neither am I. Okay, so we've got the garden fabric in there. And we're just going to take our little scissors. And these scissors aren't technically sewing scissors. They're called clean earth scissors. I've had them for probably eight years and I use them on everything. I, it says fabric on them because I know that they'll get stuck like in the kitchen or you know used on whatever. But I've cut cardboard, I've cut fabric, I cut vinyl, I cut paper, I cut everything with these things and they're the best sewing scissors I've ever had, ever 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 again they're called Westcott clean earth and they're green they have a little handle I don't even know where we got them from okay so now that we've done that let's oh. <laughs> okay I'm gonna actually have to pause you guys because I did not change over my foot when I changed everything else okay so now that that's all done and taken care of, and I never changed my needle, so I don't need to do that. Okay, so we're gonna go up here to the screen, and there's my, my file. Okay, I'm gonna upload it. And I didn't resize it in Sew What Pro, but magically it was correct by the time we were all done, so awesome. Okay, so here we have four of them. If you want to check um, what each of them are, you can click check color and you'll see each step. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to adjust and layout and we're going to bump it up to the top just so that we can use the scrap material later. Okay. So that's done. We don't need to do anything else to it. We're going to hook up our... Put our hoop on here. And just put it on there and rock it gently. Okay, I know that didn't sound very gentle. Okay, now I'm not going to talk anymore through this. I'm going to just let the machine work and I'm going to put it on fast forward for you guys in the actual video. Um, but hopefully, you'll be able to follow stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that down and press.
Hey guys and dolls, that's so exciting. It looks so pretty. All right, so something you saw me do in the middle was add some of this filmy stuff. And this is called um, Sulky Solvi film. And it's fantastic for satin, uh, satin stitch and stuff. Really dense designs, trying to kind of keeping the edges cleared up and stuff. But, and also it's a water soluble so you can if you have you know if you're doing it on a shirt or something you can use it right the shirt right away because this stuff just peels right off but if it has some really detailed stuff in it don't worry because when you wash it all of this stuff will go away oh heavens really i should have been cutting as i was going but i did not so if you cut as you go, you stop and cut and stop and cut, um, you'll have a much nicer turnout than this. <sighs> Dang it. Okay, well I'm just going to leave that because I would much rather have a line than frayed lines. Okay, so with that, I'm just peel off the sulky salvi. Okay, and if you have like a little hook tool or something, you can dig it out of the holes. Nails work too. Okay, so this is the part where we're going to take it and we're going to turn it over. And now that I've done this and I'm seeing it in person, I'm thinking that instead of picking a running stitch for the top, I should, or a bean stitch for the top, I should have just used a running stitch. Okay, so here's the back. And yeah, the back of it is very dirty. Back of my hoop <laughs> looks really gross. Ah, oh well. Okay, so this is our backing. We're going to take from the front and we're just going to cut this piece. Dang it, I'm not very good at cutting straight. Okay, and we're just going to take this same piece that we just cut off and we're going to flip this over. We're going to actually cut it a little bit smaller, but we're going to set it right there like that. And okay, we get quite a ways. This is where you want to be a little bit precise. Okay, so for the backing, we're just going to put it right over that. And then I'm going to take some just regular old scotch tape and tape it just on the top and just on the bottom. Okay. And we're going to put it right back onto the machine. Oh, I can zoom out now. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. Okay, so now we have our back on. And this is the part where I was thinking that it would be better if I would have kept it with a running stitch because what it's just going to do is it's going to go over these parts and leave these open. So it's going to look funny with, with what I'm going to do. So don't do what I do. Use a running stitch. <laughs> because now it's going to be really dark there while it's sewing that piece on. But on the edges, it's going to be just a regular running stitch. Let's see? So it barely will be noticeable to people who don't embroider. But for those of us who are attention to detail and all that stuff, uh oh, that's not good. Oh, that's good. Okay, so from here, take it off. The machine should say, finish sewing. Okay, so we're going to take that off. We are going to look at it on the back super happy with how it turned out and we're going to go ahead and just pop it out i'm going to pop it out over here <laughs> there wasn't that much room to do it there okay just set those aside and then take your scissors and you're just going to cut all around the edge here Oops, don't get too close because you don't want to cut your stitching Okay, so 
So there you go. Of course, we'll cut, I'll cut all that stuff off later. For you guys, though, I'm just going to show you. Look, there's your little slide. And I hope that I made mine big enough. I'm looking at it, and I don't think it's going to work. But let's try it. There we go. All right, so this will be going over her head, and we're gonna slide it right in there. Oh no, it'll fit perfect. There we go. <laughs> How cute is that? Oh my goodness. I mean, the colors don't really go all that great together, but well, I guess they're kind of mermaidy. <laughs> This is actually my old dog's collar um, because Sissy has hers on right now and she is in the backyard. So, alrighty. Just wanted you guys to see. There's the back. So you can do this in almost any shape that you want. You can put anything you want on it. I have one that I made for my cat for his, um, uh, his harness because he likes to go outside for walks and we have to keep him on a harness because he's just a little thing. And um, so his has his phone number on it and everything. Has my phone number on it, not his, because he doesn't have a phone number. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys had fun. This was really fun for me. The concept was really fun to think of how I was going to do it and um, actually make it happen. So I love it. Again, like I said, I would I would have just done another running stitch if I would have thought about it. Alrighty, you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.